introduction to twenty thousand leagues under the sea an underwater tour of the world by jules verne published eighteen seventy one this recording is the english translation by frederick p walter published nineteen ninety one containing the unabridged text from the original french and offered up into the public domain Recording by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. For those wishing to skip this introduction and the description of the units of measure added by the translator, please proceed to Chapter 1. Editor's Note on Verne's Title The French title of this novel is accurately translated as 20,000 Leagues Under the Seas rather than The Sea as with many english editions verne's novel features a tour of the major oceans and the term leagues in its title is used as a measure not of depth but of distance introduction by f p walter university of houston the deepest parts of the ocean are totally unknown to us admits professor aranax early in this novel what goes on in those distant depths what creatures inhabit or could inhabit those regions twelve or fifteen miles beneath the surface of the water it's almost beyond conjecture jules verne eighteen twenty eight through nineteen o five published the french equivalents of these words in eighteen sixty nine and little has changed since one hundred and twenty six years later a time cover story on deep sea exploration made much the same admission we know more about mars than we know about the oceans this reality begins to explain the dark power and otherworldly fascination of twenty thousand leagues under the seas born in the french river town of nance verne had a lifelong passion for the sea first as a paris stockbroker later as a celebrated author and yachtsman he went on frequent voyages to britain america the mediterranean but the specific stimulus for this novel was an eighteen sixty five fan letter from a fellow writer madame george sand she praised verne's two early novels five weeks in a balloon eighteen sixty three and journey to the centre of the earth eighteen sixty four then added soon i hope you'll take us to the ocean depths your characters traveling in diving equipment perfected by your science and your imagination thus inspired verne created one of literature's great rebels a freedom fighter who plunged beneath the waves to wage a unique form of guerrilla warfare initially verne's narrative was influenced by the eighteen sixty three uprising of poland against tsarist russia the Poles were quashed with a violence that appalled not only Verne, but all of Europe. As originally conceived, Verne's Captain Nemo was a Polish nobleman whose entire family had been slaughtered by Russian troops. Nemo builds a fabulous futuristic submarine, the Nautilus, then conducts an underwater campaign of vengeance against his imperialist oppressor. But in the 1860s, France had to treat the Tsar as an ally and verne's publisher pierre hetzel pronounced the book unprintable verne reworked its political content devising new nationalities for nemo and his great enemy information revealed only in a later novel the mysterious island eighteen seventy five in the present work nemo's background remains a dark secret in all the novel had a difficult gestation verne and hetzel were in constant conflict and the book went through multiple drafts struggles reflected in its several working titles over the period eighteen sixty five through sixty nine early on it was variously called voyage under the waters twenty five thousand leagues under the waters twenty thousand leagues under the waters and a thousand leagues under the oceans verne is often dubbed in isaac asimov's phrase the world's first science fiction writer and it's true many of his sixty odd books do anticipate future events and technologies from the earth to the moon eighteen sixty five and hector servadac eighteen seventy seven deal in space travel while journey to the center of the earth features travel to the earth's core but with verne the operative word is travel and some of his best-known titles don't really qualify as sci-fi around the world in eighty days eighteen seventy two 
and Michael Strogoff, 1876, are closer to travelogues, adventure yarns in faraway places. These observations partly apply here. The subtitle of the present book is An Underwater Tour of the World, so in good travelogue style, the Nautilus's exploits supply an episodic storyline shark attacks giant squid cannibals hurricanes whale hunts and other rip-roaring adventures erupt almost at random yet this loose structure gives the novel an air of documentary realism what's more verne adds backbone to the action by developing three recurring motifs the deepening mystery of nemo's past life and future intentions the mounting tension between nemo and the hot-tempered harpooner ned land and ned's ongoing schemes to escape from the nautilus these unifying threads tighten the narrative and accelerate its momentum other subtleties occur inside each episode the textures sparkling with wit information and insight verne regards the sea from many angles in the domain of marine biology he gives us thumbnail sketches of fish seashells coral sometimes in great catalogues that swirl past like musical cascades in the realm of geology he studied volcanoes literally inside and out in the world of commerce he celebrates the high energy entrepreneurs who lay the atlantic cable or dig the suez canal and verne's marine engineering proves especially authoritative his specifications for an open sea submarine and a self-containing diving suit were decades before their time yet modern technology bears them out triumphantly true today's scientists know a few things he didn't the south pole isn't at the water's edge but far inland sharks don't flip over before attacking giant squid sport ten tentacles not eight sperm whales don't prey on their whalebone cousins this notwithstanding verne furnishes the most evocative portrayal of the ocean depths before the arrival of jacques cousteau and technicolor film lastly the book has stature as a novel of character even the supporting cast is shrewdly drawn professor aranax the career scientist caught in an ethical conflict conseil the compulsive classifier who supplies humorous taglines for verne's fast facts the harpooner ned land a creature of constant appetites man as heroic animal but much of the novel's brooding power comes from captain nemo inventor musician renaissance genius he is a trailblazing creation the prototype not only for countless renegade scientists in popular fiction but even for such varied figures as sherlock holmes or wolf larsen however verne gives his hero's brilliance and benevolence a dark underside the man's obsessive hate for his old enemy this compulsion leads nemo into ugly contradictions he is a fighter for freedom yet all who board his ship are imprisoned there for good he works to save lives both human and animal yet he himself creates a holocaust he detests imperialism yet he lays personal claim to the south pole and in this last action he falls into the classic sin of pride he is swiftly punished the nautilus nearly perishes in the antarctic and nemo sinks into a growing depression like shakespeare's king lear he courts death and madness in a great storm then commits mass murder collapses in catatonic paralysis and suicidally runs his ship into the ocean's most dangerous whirlpool hate swallows him whole for many then this book has been a source of fascination surely one of the most influential novels ever written an inspiration for such scientists and discoverers as engineer simon lake oceanographer william bb polar traveler sir ernest shackleton likewise dr robert d ballard finder of the sunken titanic confesses that this was his favorite book as a teenager and cousteau himself most renowned of marine explorers called it his shipboard bible the present translation is a faithful yet communicative rendering of the original french texts published in paris by j hetzel s the hardcover first edition issued in the autumn of 1871 collated with the soft cover editions of the first and second parts issued separately in the autumn of 1869 and the summer of 1870 
although prior english versions have often been heavily abridged this new translation is complete to the smallest substantive detail because as that time cover story suggests we still haven't caught up with verne even in our era of satellite dishes and video games the seas keep their secrets we've seen progress in sonar torpedoes and other belligerent machinery but sailors and scientists to say nothing of tourists have yet to voyage in a submarine with the luxury and efficiency of the nautilus end of introduction units of measure cable length in verne's context 600 feet centigrade zero degrees centigrade equals freezing water 37 degrees centigrade equals human body temperature 100 degrees centigrade equals boiling water fathom six feet gram roughly one twenty eighth of an ounce milligram roughly one twenty eight thousandth of an ounce kilogram or kilo roughly two point two pounds hectare roughly two point five acres not 1.15 miles per hour league in verne's context 2.16 miles liter roughly one quart meter roughly one yard three inches millimeter roughly one twenty-fifth of an inch centimeter roughly two-fifths of an inch decimeter roughly four inches kilometer roughly six-tenths of a mile Myriameter, roughly 6.2 miles. Ton, metric, roughly 2,200 pounds. End of units of measure. End of section.